Hello everyone and welcome back to this introduction on floral carving. I'm Joe Mealing for Weaver Leathercraft and I'd like to thank you for following along. Today we're going to start working with our bevel. Now the bevel is an essential part of your tooling. It's one of the foundation tools that's going to set up for the rest of your pattern. So we talked in the last video about cutting our pattern in and we got to try to get those lines as smooth as we can. Now it's time to follow up with our bevel and really start bringing that pattern to life, setting some definition between the foreground and the background and layering your vines. So let's head over to the bench and get started. Okay, we're going to continue on with our small journal cover and our free downloadable pattern that we started in the last videos. The first thing that we're going to do is wet that leather down. When I wet that, I want to wet the entire piece because I don't want it to worry about drying and getting water lines and stains on the front of my cover. So I'm going to go ahead and wet that entire piece nice and even. Get a good coat of water on it. It's just plain water. What I like using for applying it is a natural sponge. It works really good. It holds a lot of water in that sponge and doesn't leave any, doesn't have any chemical residue like some of your uh, normal dish sponges will have right out of the package. Okay, now once we put that on there, you can see that leather already starting to absorb that water and get our color back. As we're beveling, we're going to really be able to watch for our color change and the burnishing as we begin to bevel. And that's going to come from moisture. So I just got a regular weight there. Uh, it's got some BBs in there that we'll weight that down with. And we're going to be using the steep bevel today. I love the imprint that this one puts. And you can see how far that shadow goes out. It stays pretty tight into it compared to the, the standard bevel that you'll get in the beginner's kit. That's why I recommend this steep bevel. I'm gonna go ahead and start beveling these lines as we're talking about it here. But You'll notice it looks like I'm just running and pushing that bevel right along. Now that, we're going to slow that down and look at what it is I'm doing to keep from frustrating yourself. <laughs> I'm actually hitting down and all the down pressure is coming from my mallet and moving that bevel every time I'm hitting it. But I am adjusting my pressure through my mallet and doing my moving side to side with my fingers. One common mistake as you're getting started, it's easy to really try to push down with your hand that's holding your tool and that's not necessary. It'll wear your hand out and make get your knuckles sore and make your fingers sore for no reason. The ol only thing we're doing with that left hand is holding that tool tight so it doesn't run out of your hand. It almost acts like a spring. I'm holding that tool even with the leather and so then I hit down with my mallet and you can see I just use that hand to spring it back up. And that's a little exaggerated there to kind of show you the idea. <clears throat> but if I can keep that bevel coming back up out of the leather so I can run it along there without this front toe getting caught in there. What we're trying to achieve is nice, smooth bevel lines. 
we don't want to have them really choppy and if I try moving that bevel too far down the line and and move it the entire bevel length you can see these little notches starting to take place and it looks like you're almost chewing it out of there we want to come back and even those up the best we can and there's no limit on how many times you can go over something when you bevel it as much as we need to to smooth it out but easier than smoothing it out is to try to put it on there smooth when you start so as I run that bevel I'm going to be hitting down and when I move that I'm moving it very slightly so not a full bevel length not even half a bevel length or a quarter I go even less than that I barely pick that toe up out of the, my groove and move on to that next piece that needs beveled by moving it so slightly like that it will run right along there and keep things very smooth that'll allow you to bevel a lot further in your project without having to go back over and smooth your lines out So there I'm able to bevel down one way and just run right back and barely smooth them out. Now if you follow along with our last video when we cut this pattern in, we talked about fading those swivel cuts out. And just the way we faded them out with our knife, now I'm wanting to continue to fade them down with my bevel. Now the more proficient you get at running one tool, the easier it's going to be to run the rest of your tools, right? So the better that you, you fade those out with your knife, it's going to be easier to come along and fade out with your bevel. If you stop real abruptly with your knife at the end of your cuts, you're going to have to work a lot harder to fade it out with your bevel. But listen to the difference here too. A line like right here, the top of this leaf coming in or the top of this petal coming in. I'm not fading that line because it intersects with something on both ends. So I'm hitting that pretty even all the way across there. But now as I come to a line that I want to fade out, so the top of this stem where this is coming around, you can listen as I come around, listen for the difference in my mallet. So the further I get down where I'm fading that out, I'm barely tapping it and almost just pushing that bevel along with my fingers. You'll notice I'll move my leather as I'm tooling this. I always want to keep this flat face of the bevel pointed to me. I want to see that flat face right in the groove that I'm beveling. So I always know that my shadow is going away from me. By, by having that flat side towards me, and watching that sit right in my cut, that 
cuts down on the chances of me running over that line and into a piece of the leather that I don't want to actually bevel down. I want to keep my bevel marks just in the cuts that I've already made. You'll notice as I'm going through this pattern, I skip around a little bit. I, I still have lines up here that haven't been beveled yet. Same thing underneath there, that one hasn't been beveled yet. What I'm looking for is efficiency in my tooling. I don't want to turn that leather more times than I have to. Uh, whether you're doing this for a job and selling your products or if you're just wanting to do this for a hobby the more efficient you can be the better right you can either have more fun and get more stuff built or make more money by cutting down your your time into it so i try to reach as much as i can as many lines as i can from the position that the leather's in and then I'll rotate as needed, especially if I'm doing a, a bigger project like a belt that's harder to turn all the way around on your marble. That really comes into play in that instance. It's important to be able to run your bevel both directions. You'll notice sometimes I'm going right to left and then I'll go right back left to right and smooth those lines out. The more ambidextrous you can get in doing that, the again, the more efficient that you can be, but also the more versatile you can be too as far as patterns that fade cuts are fading out in both directions you can be a lot more uniform in your tooling if you're comfortable with running that bevel in both directions now one way is going to be a lot more comfortable for you than the other way just being right-handed or left-handed but through practice, you'll be able to go both directions. Now you'll notice when I come around a tighter curve, I'll tip that bevel. And what that's doing is that's shortening the face of that. So by tipping it back, I can cut that bevel size to half or a quarter just by tipping that bevel back away from there. And what that does is keeps that front toe of your bevel there from marking up your leather as you come around there. The, your other option is to upgrade your tools and buy you know, lots of different sizes of bevels and so you have some smaller bevels can get around tighter corners, but it's nice to be able to use one tool and get the most out of it. Um, not that you won't want smaller bevels at some point. However, simply by tipping that tool, you can fit into more spaces. It makes that tool a lot more universal for you and a little less time that you have to spend switching tools back and forth in your block. Now 
Now when I come down towards this flower center here in the middle, I'm just gonna kind of stop that back a little bit from there. I don't wanna run those lines in and start connecting them in there because we'll come back later with an actual flower center um, in another video when we start putting more of the final details into this pattern. Beveling is such a crucial part of your tooling because it it's really can make a project stand out for the good or the bad. Because your entire pattern here has beveling in it. Where as your flower centers or different other tools that we get to will only be in certain parts. But the beveling is all through your project. So the smoother you get your lines, the cleaner your project's gonna look overall. See, so I'll come down one way and then I can tap a little bit lighter as I roll back along there to smooth those lines up. And it's very slight, but as I'm running in one direction, I will tip that tool back away from the direction I'm heading. Again, that's just to take that front toe up out of the leather a little bit so it's not catching as I'm moving along there. So that moves nice and smooth that way. You begin to get a little bit of a feel on your leather too. Now this is something I'm still getting the burnishing, so I'm still getting that darker color is what I mean by the burnishing effect. But I notice it's harder to get my lines smooth. And from experience, I know that water or my leather is getting just a little bit dry. So I'm gonna re-wet this one time here. see that moisture starting to suck down into that leather again we want to keep a that consistent moisture content in there the best we can uh, to get nice consistent tooling through there well, that feels a lot better and you don't want it to be too wet because your leather will get mushy and not want to take your tool imprints very well and it won't they won't get real crisp imprints but they'll just kind of mush and push your leather around so there is such thing as getting it too wet but that's one of the hardest things one of the hardest questions to answer is how much water do I put on it? Because um, there's not really an exact amount. It's going to depend on your piece of leather, the temperature in your room, if you have any kind of airflow in there. There's lots of factors to how quick a piece of leather is going to dry out as you're tooling it. But over time, you just start learning by a few different things. One, you'll be able to look and see 
what's the color of my leather doing and you'll and you'll start learning the when it's starting to look too dry or if it still looks too wet um, the feel of your leather as far as I can feel how hard I'm having to hit my tools or I can feel how my tools feel sliding across it or my knife if I'm cutting with my swivel knife I know um, if that's starting beginning to drag a little bit I know that leather is getting a little bit dry uh, and the other one is sound sounds a big one that again you learn it over time but you can start hearing what that sounds like when you're hitting on leather that's getting too dry towards the bottom Got a few more lines to go this direction then I need to rotate my leather and catch our last few lines and we'll have this beveled out now <clears throat> it's really important as you're doing this to be patient with yourself and not get frustrated um, beveling is takes a lot of time and a lot of practice but it's so worth it to take the time and get your beveling right um, like I said it really shows up in the in your overall work but it there is a big learning curve to it and it takes time to be able to smooth your lines out uh, and it takes time to be able to get to where you can tool them smooth enough to start with where you don't have to spend a lot of time smoothing them out after the fact but the more time you spend slowing down taking the time to get those lines smooth the better you'll get at it and the quicker you'll get at that so be patient i know everybody's not gonna grab their tools up and keep right up to speed as we're doing this and and have theirs beveled out real smooth right away but don't feel bad i didn't used to do it this fast either <laughs> takes a lot of time um and you know honestly messing up some leather you'll you'll have some projects that You'll look back on and think, oh my goodness, how did I let that go out the door? But you keep getting better and better over time the more you do it. Now, it's important too when you're going into another line to try not to run over it I don't want to I don't want to bevel into that and start putting a dent in that next line in if I do I can go back and touch it up and at this point, there's lots of room for going back and fixing up and touching up. So taking the time to make it look how you want. And even right in here in these points where this vine is coming and intersecting underneath that flower. So I would beveled that line first and then I came back. To bevel that flower over when I do that it kind of smushes out that line underneath now you can leave it like that and a lot of people wouldn't know the difference but to take the time just to go back and retouch that bevel on there 
is a small thing that'll make a difference when you start adding that together in your overall project. Now, if you're not using this steep bevel, if you're just using your, your regular bevel that comes out of the beginner's kit, um, like we went over in the video talking about the tools when we did the tool overview, you're not going to get the same result with the standard bevel as you will with this steep bevel. So just beware to kind of remind you, if you are using your standard bevel, have some grace with yourself about the results you get because that has a lot flatter face. So it's gonna push that shadow out further uh, and it will be a lot harder to fade those lines out down in your stems. So when I come to fade this line here, and I get down towards the end, I can really fade this line out with that steep bevel to where it fades almost to nothing. With your standard bevel, you're not gonna get as, as much of a fade in there. You can get some, but it won't get near the effect. So that's why I really recommend adding on to your tools and getting that this steep bevel. Now there's two sizes of the steep bevel uh, and this one happens to be the smaller one of the two. So just in case you were wondering about that, if you have both of them or are looking to get one, uh, this one that I'm using today is the smaller of the two steep bevels. Okay, turn this leather back around. Let's have one more look at that. Okay, all of our lines smoothed out. We've gone over them a couple times. We've faded out the lines that need to be faded. So any of the ones that are ending within that vine work, we wanna fade those out along there. But there's a nice clean bevel job using the steep bevel. And we are set to go for our next step. Next, we'll be looking at the pear shader. So be sure to check out the next video on that as well. Thank you again for following along with us. I hope this information has been helpful. And remember to be patient as you're learning. Have fun with what you're doing. And stay tuned for the next videos when we continue to work through the tools and finish this pattern out.